Good day everybody, it's been a while and for today's tutorial I will provide some techniques on how to color your drawing efficiently with the use of fill and selection in Clip Studio Paint. Alright, so first things first, we should prepare the interface because there are some important functions we can find in properties for the selection area tool and fill tool. By default, you can always find the sub-tool and tool property and whenever you've lost this, don't you worry because you can always find it on menu bar window and you can see it over here. Normally, I ignore the provide sub-tool options since I understand most features in tool property. So in my Clip Studio interface, everything is a mess but still gonna explain those sub-tool options below anyways. If you have a specific settings you frequently use, you can always add a custom sub-tool by duplicating any of these and add your own naming on it. Then you can change the settings in tool property that later I will discuss most of these functions. By right-clicking any of the sub-tool, you can lock it to avoid changing the settings accidentally. Now we're going to prepare our tool property. Select this wrench icon to see more detailed options. In this window, you can unhide and hide some options in tool property so that you don't need to go back and forth to this window. Please take note that each tool has different subtool and tool property, but mostly similar. There's a lot of things you can find here, but we'll only show something I needed the most. Under closed area fill, which can also be applied to fill tool properties, unhide the target color, closed gap, tolerance, and area of scaling and under the reference and hide the refer multiple and its sub option and other else is optional but I recommend to turn on the anti-aliasing always to avoid pixelations and will be having a smooth selections now let's move on to selection area tool the first one is lasso so the first tool you need to master for efficient workflow is the lasso. If you are using a non-screen tablet, it may take a while to practice, but no need to worry because the more you keep on doing it, the more you can master it quickly. And trust me, it will be very efficient in many occasions, especially on adding a still shade shadows. Same as the polyline, which can be very useful on straight objects like buildings. Another interesting tool is the shrink selection. The good thing about it is you don't need to use the auto select tool whenever you wanted to select some areas to color. You can simply circle around the entire drawing and it will automatically select the outline of the drawing, but make sure to choose one of the options in target color. Then select the all enclosed areas except transparency. Now create new layer, deliver it below under the line art, and press this fill icon in selection launcher. Though as for me, I turn off this selection launcher because it is blocking some areas when working, so I prefer to hide it. And if ever you wanted to do the fill, you can always find it below the menu bar. Or you can just press Alt Delete as its shortcut key. Now these two other sub tools can be explained easily. This is just simply use this round brush like on adding selection or erase selection. But make sure to check the anti-aliasing for smoother edges. Now let's go back to more functions on shrink selection. As you can see, if you want to select the enclosed area right within the entire drawing, you cannot do that unless you change the target color into area surrounded by black. Now once you select around this area, it will only select the enclosed area. Though I do not recommend this if your line art is really thin because sometimes the AI cannot read the lines. Also, please take note that the area surrounded by black option will only read 100% black ink. So if the drawing is more on sketch or a little gray, this might not work. Now with all these selection functions, I'm also gonna introduce you to Quick Mask. So what does this Quick Mask do? Well, it's just a selection with the use of your own brush like how Selection Pen and Erase Selection works. Though normally I use this to check my area of selection clearly because sometimes it's a little confusing if you're only looking on these running lines on the edges and we're not sure which part is being selected. 
To activate the quick mask, you drop down the select menu and choose the quick mask and you will see this icon on your layers. But to make it less hassle, assign a shortcut to it. Under the file menu, go to shortcut settings. Then under select, you can find quick mask. As for me, I use this Q. Any selection happening in normal layer will turn into red translucent paint once you switch into quick mask mode. And once you paint in this mode using your brush, it will become a selection once you change back to normal mode. Now let us proceed to phase 2, understanding tool property functions. By selecting the auto select tool, you'll find most of the features in tool property. First is the selection mode. The first icon is a new selection. Every time you click anywhere on the canvas, it will make a new selection. It will deselect any existing selection you've made if you click to other areas. The second icon is add more selection. This won't deselect your previous selection and it will add instead. But clicking this with your cursor back and forth, it will lessen the efficiency. So to avoid that, without clicking any of these, by just holding shift, it will show plus sign to your cursor, which means it is ready to add more selection. This also works on lasso and polyline. The third icon is remove from selection. It will remove any existing selection. Holding Alt key will make this possible for efficiency. The fourth one is select from the selection. Basically, you will select anything within the existing selection. Holding control is a shortcut for this one. Now let us proceed to close gap. This one is very useful, allows you to select within the area you intended to select. Even your line art has a few pixel gaps. Normally you only see bars, but if you drop down this bracket, it will give you a specific number of pixels. I don't normally go this deep, but it's there if you needed it. These bars are actually enough for us. Now for the tolerance. Sets the range of color considered as the same color. It is useful with the anti-aliasing feature. Since we want our line to be smooth, anti-aliasing exists because we don't want our lines looks pixelated. Because of these extra pixels just to make the line smoother, without the tolerance, you won't be able to include these pixels into your selection. So adjusting the tolerance allows you to include those pixels. Now for the area of scaling. Another useful feature for your line art, especially if you want to add more pixel of your selection. This acted like the expand function, so you may not need the expand selection anymore. Though, that still comes handy if you may want to add one more pixel on your selection. You know, little adjustments. If you click this plus sign, it will give you more scaling mode option. I rarely use this on line art because this mode can only be obvious if you set your area of scaling into maximum within a very thick line around. Now let's proceed to refer multiple. One of the great features that Clip Studio Paint can offer allows you to only select which layer you are referring to. The first icon is set as all layers, very basic which means it will refer anything within the canvas. It will detect anything on the canvas as long as the color of the pixel changes, even you are selecting within the editing layer. Editing layer means the one you've highlighted on the layers. Second icon is referring to reference layer. It will ignore anything on the canvas except on the layer you set as reference layer. You might notice that you can only set one reference layer, but actually you can apply multiple reference when you selected multiple layers and set it to reference. And the third icon is selected layer. This allows you to make a selection referring only to multiple layer you've selected. The fourth icon is layer in folder. This allows you to select anything referring layers within the specific folder you've highlighted. So now we're done with tool property, it's now easier to explain about the fill tool because it's just similar to any selection tool. Phase 3 Actually the main topic of this tutorial is for fill functions. 
but since I've already explained things on tool property, everything will be easier to understand now. The reason why I've also discussed about selection because they are always been partnered with fill. And using the selection functions will make it easier to show you visually how the fill would work. And after all, the fill and auto select tool property are similar with just a little difference. So instead of repeating everything I just discussed, I'm just gonna show you how efficient it is after knowing all of these features. So this is fast break. Step 1. Make a clean line art and set it to the reference layer. Step 2. New raster layer for silhouettes. Step 3. Instead of using shrink selection, the similar to that on fill tool is in close and fill and refer to reference layer. Then select the entire drawing. Step 4. New layer for flat colors. Clip to layer below, then use ordinary fill, referring to reference layer. Step 5. Create new layer for shadow. Use lasso tool, then fill tool. Or use quick mask if you're not comfortable with lasso. Step 6. Highlights. I'm just gonna choose my own color at this point because I'm more comfortable with it. Step 7. You can now finish it, render it, polish it, finalize, finishing retouches. And voila! You're done! Right? Well, that escalated quickly, but that was the point of this tutorial. Telling you all of these things and information to make your workflow faster and efficient and, well of course, add some other extras that can be useful with your other workflow. So, I guess that's it for this tutorial and I hope this helps you speed up your workflow. I always do these steps, but improve thanks to all of these features that Clip Studio Paint has. Because of this, I can produce more illustration pages. So yeah, please subscribe for more Clip Studio tutorial in the future.